Did you know that one of the greatest speakers in modern history learned to speak well by reading alone in a prison cell? Malcolm X didn't have an easy childhood. He grew up in an environment marked by violence, racism, and poverty. He dropped out of school at a young age and got involved in crime. And it was right then, at the darkest moment of his life, that something unexpected happened. Sentenced to prison for theft, Malcolm lost his freedom, but he had time. And it was this time that he chose to invest in something that would change his mind forever. Books. Barely able to express himself, he started with the basics. He copied the entire dictionary by hand, word by word. It wasn't just about vocabulary. He was literally rebuilding his brain. Then, he dove into books on history, philosophy, religion, politics, and with every page, something extraordinary happened. His worldview expanded. His mind lit up. Malcolm X didn't have teachers. He had words. He had pages. He had a thirst for knowledge. And it was through reading that he was reborn, becoming one of the most brilliant and influential thinkers of the 20th century. And... You know what's even more amazing? Science backs up exactly what he experienced. Every time you read, your brain activates a complex network of regions. The visual cortex, temporal cortex, parietal cortex, prefrontal cortex, all working together in sync to turn letters into ideas, ideas into understanding, and understanding into transformation. Reading isn't just a pastime, it's mental exercise, capable of reconfiguring how you think, speak, remember, and create. Just like with Malcolm X, it can open invisible doors inside you. Today, we're going to dive deep into what happens in your brain while you read, and why this habit can change your life more than you imagine. Reading is a fundamental skill for human life. It's through reading that we gain new knowledge, develop cognitive skills, and expand our vocabulary, allowing us to form new connections and ways of thinking. Our brain undergoes complex transformations during reading. But to understand how that works, it helps to first know what's actually happening inside our brain while we read. When you look at a word, whether in a book, on your phone, or anywhere else, your brain starts by capturing visual information. This process begins in the visual cortex, located in the back part of the brain, the occipital lobe. That's the region responsible for identifying shapes and visual patterns. Then, that information is sent to other areas of the brain that help you understand the meaning of words. The temporal cortex, located on the sides of the brain, gets activated to give meaning to the words and turn them into thoughts. Other areas, like the parietal cortex and the prefrontal cortex, also play key roles in producing and understanding written language. It's the interaction between all these areas that allows us to connect what we read with what we already know linking new information to past experiences. Speaking specifically of the prefrontal cortex, it plays a central role in reading. It helps us stay focused, decide what's relevant, and understand the context in which words are used. As you continue reading, your brain is constantly making connections between what you're reading and what you already know. It's truly fascinating how the brain coordinates so many different processes to allow us to absorb new information, whether for practical use, academic growth, or pure entertainment. Reading, then, is far from a simple activity. In fact, it's a full-on brain workout. But what happens when someone develops the habit of reading every day? Recent studies show that regular reading is linked 
to structural changes in a brain in both gray matter and white matter. This means an increase in the efficiency of how neurons work. Areas of the temporal cortex involved in language comprehension may show increased volume with consistent reading. In addition, the connections between areas responsible for language and those related to memory tend to grow stronger. These changes directly impact how the brain functions. Reading can improve the capacity and efficiency of visual processing, making it easier to recognize patterns in texts, and even enhancing general visual pattern recognition, like recognizing faces or different places. Reading daily also contributes to the development of abstract thinking, complex reasoning, and vocabulary. In other words, the more you read, the better you communicate because you gain mastery over more words and ways to express yourself. That happens because your brain becomes more efficient at processing language. It literally gets quicker at handling words. And the benefits don't stop there. Frequent reading also boosts other important cognitive functions like memory, attention, and concentration. To stay focused on a text, your brain needs to ignore external distractions and stay engaged in understanding what you're reading. That takes a significant amount of cognitive effort. But over time, just like muscles adapt through physical exercise, the brain adapts to becoming more resistant to fatigue and better at staying focused. When it comes to memory, there's evidence that regular reading improves working memory. The ability to hold and manipulate information temporarily while performing a mental task. While reading, we need to remember characters, plots, concepts, and details that are essential to fully understand the content. This real-time integration of information is mostly handled by areas in the prefrontal cortex. So, the more we read, the more we train our brains to process information quickly and deeply, which can help us think more clearly and respond more effectively in all kinds of situations. I hope that after all this, I've convinced you of the importance of making reading a lifelong habit. So tell me, do you enjoy reading? What's your favorite book? Let me know in the comments. If this video helped you, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. My purpose is to help you reconnect with the power of your own mind through neuroscience. See you in the next video.